All right, so to get us moving again here, we want to recap some of the things that we talked about um, the last time we were together. And that was primarily centered around identifying the three major players in an exponential function. So if you remember, our three major players came from the fact that it was y equals a times b raised to the x power plus k. So our three major players here are your a, your b, and your k. We want to be able to determine who a is, who b is, and who k is, because they each have a role to play. So in this first example, it should be pretty straightforward. Your a value has to be this 4. So it leads with that positive 4 right there. Your b value is the 2 over 3. Your b value is always the base that's being raised to the exponent. And your k value is the number that is being added or subtracted to the end. So once we've done that, it en enables us to determine whether this is growing or whether it is decaying. And that all depends on your MVP. That all depends on the B value here. The B value determines whether you are growing or decaying. And in this case, because my B value, the B value here is less than 1. So 2 thirds, your B value here is less than 1. That means that we are not growing, but we are decaying. So anything that is below the 1 mark and greater than 0, so I'll put that on the side here. Anything that is below 1 but greater than 0, it's really important that we determine um, that that is your growth. Excuse me, that that is decay. As the last component is to determine where is your asymptote. And your asymptote is connected to the k value. Whatever the k value is, that's your asymptote. But the way we write it is because it's a horizontal line. The way we write it is we write it as y equals, in this case, negative 2. So your asymptote always comes from the fact that it is a horizontal line. So that is going to be y equals your k value. In this case, y equals negative 2. So try out this second one. See if you can identify what your a value is, what your b value is, and what is your k value. If it were me, I'm going to start at the end because that's kind of pretty straightforward. My k value is positive 6. So I can immediately say, well, that means that my y equals 6. That's my asymptote. My b value here, you might make the mistake of thinking that your b value is negative 3. It's not negative 3. Um, it's only positive 3 because the negative isn't being raised to the x power. Just the positive 3 is. So then that means then what is my a value? My a value is technically negative 1. If you were to rewrite this equation, it would be negative 1 times 3 to the x power plus 6. So your a value is that invisible negative 1 right there. So hopefully that enables us to get going here on remembering what were the rules of a, what were the rules of b and k. Remembering that b is the most important one. b determines whether it is growth or decay. So if that's the case, if my b value is positive 3, then all day that is going to be growth. Because anything that is greater than 1 is exponential growth. So hopefully that kind of re reminds you of what's coming back um, from our last day of class. Now the next component is to actually get an, a, a jump on some word problems. And this is going to be really cool because here's a, a first little uh, intro for you. So if you didn't know it, when Archicale first opened back in 2007, we only had 1,142 students. So 1,142 students. But today we have over 3,300. So the question then says, well, what, what's actually going on here? We actually have about a 7% increase, a 7% increase in students every year. So our enrollment goes up 7%. The question then comes, how can we use that information how can we use that information to predict, that's going to be the key, to predict how many students we're going to have at the start of next year. So the start of the 2020 uh, school year. Right now we're in 2019, 2020. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach you today how to answer this type of question. Because everything we have in, the, in this word problem actually connects to either the A, the B, or the K. 
So the question is, how can we use all of this to figure out, well, what's A, what's B? And then honestly, in a word problem, there's not going to be any case. So don't stress about the case for now. So in the next video, we're going to jump in and start teaching you how to uh, create equations based on the word problems that we're reading.